Please be seated. I wish you all a very blessed Easter, the resurrection of our blessed Lord himself after his crucifixion. May he bestow upon you all his Easter peace as he did to the holy apostles. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Today, on this greatest day of days, indeed the day of days, the day of the Lord, the Church celebrates with all its splendor the foundation of its founding, that is the resurrection of our blessed Lord himself. But how was it? with the resurrection of our blessed Lord. When have we seen him the last time before the resurrection? It was when Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus took him down from the cross. This image of our blessed lady is deeply impressed upon our souls. Those moments when the dead body of our blessed Lord was resting on her bosom. And then the preparation for the funeral, everything had to be first. They cleansed the body, the only women the faithful followers of our blessed Lord wrapped him in linen clothes, as it was the Jewish custom, and lay, he, lay him to rest in this new grave, this new tomb. While our blessed Lord, at three o'clock in the afternoon, the ninth hour, the blessed hour when our Lord died, when the redemption took place by the self-sacrifice of our blessed Lord. The soul, united with the divinity, separated in the moment of death, in this most precious death from his body. The soul United with the divinity, the body, the dead body, still also united with the divinity. But where was the soul of our blessed Lord for those three days? These three days of darkness. He descended into limbo. What is limbo? Limbo is this place which is neither hell nor purgatory, nor is it heaven. It's a place of natural happiness. Who are those who are in limbo? Since the gates of heaven were closed since the fall of Adam, and yet not being opened. These are those which are which believed in the Redeemer, in the promises of the prophets and the patriarchs of the Old Testament, true Israelites. Some of them were there just a few days. Others like Simeon of the temple and the prophetess Anna for a few more years, 33 years. Others almost since the beginning, impatiently waiting since they believed the pro promises of the prophets, 
unlike the high priest Cephas, who was falling away from the old faith of the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, unlike the Pharisees, our Lord descended into limbo. In his soul, he had such a great joy since he has done everything the Father has taught him to do. Most importantly, he completed the sacrifice on the cross for the redemption of mankind because there is no salvation without the redemption. But the redemption does not happen in an automatic way. This would be easy. The new church of Vatican II wants to believe us that since our Lord redeemed the entire human race, everyone goes to heaven. But this is false, this is an error, this is a heresy. Because in everything, there is the subjective reality and there is the subjective reality. That is to say, everyone who wants to be saved needs to appropriate to themselves the fruits of the redemption. God does not force anybody to go to heaven whatsoever. Nor is it an automatic effect of the redemption. But our blessed Lord, in his soul united with the divinity, had such a great joy after three o'clock in the afternoon on Good Friday, transmitted this joy to the fathers, to the prophets, to St. Joseph, to Simeon, to Anna, to others, to this mass, that their deliverance is at hand. And how happy would, be, would we be if we could hear what our Lord preached to them of the coming kingdom of God, that is the church, and everything he has done for mankind. And while our Lord in his soul has this utter Easter joy, the Lion of David was victorious on the cross and at the tomb. There is not such a joy yet. It's sadness and mourning, which I think of Mary Magdalene the holy women, the faithful follower of our blessed Lord, who did not depart, who did not flee like the apostles. And on Good Friday, the tombstone is closed. The dead body lays there in the tomb, in the cold tomb made out of stone, sealed by Pontius Pilate. The Pharisees went so far in their hatred, in their evil doing, to ask guards, Roman guards, to protect, to protect the body, since in their malicious way they are thinking the apostle would come in secret and take it away and then after spread the news that he did rise from the dead. But when the appointed time came, that is to say the resurrection, that is the reunification of his soul, with his body. What do we see? First of all, there is this marvelous earthquake at the moment of the resurrection. 
these guards around the tomb are the witnesses of the resurrection. Our the soul of Christ, united with the divinity, approaches the tomb, where his own body his lacerated, scourged body, his wounded body, lays in rest. He is not approaching the tomb alone. He is coming with all these souls of limbo, the saints of God, those who truly believed in him, even though some of them have not seen him with all the angels. The angels roll back the tombstone. Now enters the tomb, which was more than a cave, than a grave. What does the soul of Christ see? The soul of Christ sees his own body, for now wrapped in linen cloth, like in a prison, deprived of the liberty of movement. But what does the soul of Christ see? The soul of Christ sees the instrument of the redemption, of the crucifixion. He sees it he sees its own body, particularly five wounds. But now, they are not just the signs of his suffering and death, they are five glorious wounds of the resurrection and redemption at the same time. And he has such a great joy, our Lord does, seeing his own body, seeing those five wounds. And he sees all those souls throughout all those centuries, even in our own century, souls who will take advantage of his wounds, will advantage of his most precious blood every single drop which were issuing from those five wounds. And he's grateful and jubilant that he has accomplished everything that is reconciled mankind, miserable, sinful mankind with the offended majesty of God the Creator. And finally, the soul of Christ united with his divinity reunifies itself with his dead body in the tomb. The fingers and the hands with their wounds began to move again. His arm his legs, his feet, and his head are moving. The linen cloth of which the Easter sequence talks precisely are taken off, probably by an angel, and folded nicely together to keep as relics. And now in great triumph, amidst the saints and angels, he rose gloriously from the dead. The Lion of David was victorious, and is victorious on this marvelous day of Easter Sunday in the middle of the night, in the early morning. The modernists have destroyed the Catholic 
truth of the biological resurrection of Christ. Day to day, very high people in very high position, cardinals, even the deceased Cardinal Ratzinger and later Benedict XVI, who have taught erroneously and heretically about the resurrection, that it's just a spiritual resurrection in the minds of the apostles, not a physical, a bodily resurrection, which contradicts very clearly the scriptures itself. The apostles who run away we are so frightful on Easter Sunday morning still. It not even came to their mind whatsoever that our Lord would rise just in their mind spiritually. No, our Lord truly rose from the dead with his body. And how could it be different? Life itself, who called himself the life and the truth and the way, could not remain in this grave as a dead body. He is the creator. And what a foolishness of the, of the high priest and the Pharisees to believe that the one who rose Lazarus from the dead just a few days before Palm Sunday, would remain in the grave. And that those guards around the tomb would prevent God of rising again on Easter Sunday morning. Our Lord departs in all his glory, in his transfigured state, with great light and glory from the tombstone, from the tomb, appearing, of course, the Blessed Virgin Mary, as is the conviction of the fathers and others, in order to show himself as the risen Christ to her, to the one who was so intimately united in his life and particularly in his suffering must be also as associate in his glory, in his resurrection. And while this is all going on, the women as we hear today in today's Gospel, they are going very early in the morning, the sacred text says, it is still dark. When they began to go, to Calvary, to go to the, to the tomb, because they have not finished their last works of charity, that is, the anointing. And they are so wrapped up in their consideration of our Lord and what happened the last few days, they totally forget to take Prevision, because obviously the tomb is closed, they think. And so they're arriving at the tomb, and the sun was just rising, the dawn, and now they come to the realization who will actually open this tomb for us that we can complete the anointing of the sacred body. And very surprisingly, <coughs> and what a surprise for them, the tomb is opened. Now what is in the tomb now? The tomb, the linen cloth, of his holy countenance and the linen clothes which wrapped his body are nicely folded up by the angel. 
And the angel of the resurrection already awaiting him. He's sitting on a stone there, waiting for them. And they're entering the tomb. And the angel, the messenger of God, is told to give them as the first the message, the evangelium, the good message that our Lord just rose from the dead. It is so natural for the angel. It's almost natural if it would be not supernatural. Without any difficulty, without any doubts, of course, the angel explains, you are seeking Jesus of Nazareth, was crucified. Very self-understood for the angel. He is not here. He's risen. As he would have to say, how could he be different? Life itself, God himself, the creator, the redeemer, the second person of the blessed trinity, cannot remain in the grave. The origin of every life, the preserver of the entire universe, cannot remain in the grave. He is not here, he is risen. But the angel of the resurrection sends them to Galilee to tell the apostles, and he says, especially Peter, Peter, when do we see him the last time? When he ran away with tears in his eyes because of his denying three times his divine master. Peter didn't know, even though our Lord looked at a terrible night on Holy Thursday night, he looked deeply in his eyes. Peter did not know what to expect after the resurrection. Was he to be rejected by our Lord since he denied his master? Therefore, this is a very important detail of the message of the angel. Tell the apostles and especially Peter that he will meet them in Galilee. Since he truly rose from the dead. Today, on Easter Sunday, it's a very joyful day, of course. It's the greatest Sunday of the entire year, the greatest feast. It is the manifestation of, of the greatness of God, the greatness of the Redeemer in his glory, in his resurrection. He wants us from us that we live in that state, in our soul, even though we are still in this valley of tears, in our soul, we should have true joy, Easter joy. We are calling ourselves Christians after our Lord, Jesus Christ, who was crucified and rose from the dead on the third day, in our soul we already possess this supernatural life, the life of Christ in sanctifying grace. In our soul, hopefully, we rose already from the dead by baptism and by the renewal of baptism, that is, by confession. So today we sing and pray with Holy Mother the Church that Christ truly rose from the dead. Alleluia. God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.